Hello fellow quilters, this is Kimberly Purdy again. Um, right now what you're looking at is my French braid frenzy before it's been trimmed. So as you can see it's kind of just this weird curving meandering thing that has you know just sticks out in all directions or whatever and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim this up. So what I want you to do first is I want you to look at the pattern and what we've done is there are a series of the squares that actually line up um, along the center line. So those are squares number one, then the square in row eight, which would technically be like square number nine, but it's the eighth row. Then moving down, the square in row 14, and finally your last square. So what, what they do then is if you look, at the pattern, what it does is here, you can see I've drawn, I don't know if you very faintly, you can see the center line here that I've drawn through all those squares. You can see that the squares kind of go below, then they cross that center line, go above, cross the center line again, and then go below and back to the center. So what we've done is we've marked that center line, drawn a line all along there, um, and obviously make sure that you test whatever you're going to use to mark, whether it's the chalk or whether it's, um, you know, like a friction pen, you know, or just, you know, whatever you prefer, like the water erase or air erase pencils um, or pens, markers and that, whatever. Anyway, so I've made mine, made my mark, and now what we're going to do is we're going to look for our narrowest points. Now, on this one, traditionally your narrowest point is between rows 11 and 12 on the bottom, or between 17 and 18 on the top. So on mine, this measured, I did mine with the saves time method, so it's going to be a little wider than the saves fabric. But from measuring from my center line over here, this side here measures about seven and a quarter to the edge of the fabric, right there at that shortest point. Though on this other side here, back between rows 11 and 12, it only measures six and three quarters. So what we're going to want to do is <clears throat> six and three quarters then is going to be our mark because that is our narrowest point on the uh, the runner. So now that I've marked my center line and now that I know my shortest point, what I want to do is actually go down and measure up that six and three quarters inches because I want my table runner to be as wide as possible and then draw another line. And I don't know if you can see right here across there. It's a little hard to see across the reds, but I've made another mark. And what we're going to do then is we're going to mark that, that six and three quarters and six and three quarters. Now, yours may not be that particular measurement. Yours may be different. It depends on how accurate your cutting was, you know, how, you know, well you did your piecing and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're going to vary. Um, the maximum I've, I've done with my own work is about seven inches. So, um, and the shortest has been a little under six. Um, with the uh, saves fabric method that I um, put in there. So, but that's also a good indication that if you do want to make the table runner wider, knowing that these then are your shortest points, if you just lengthened these few, um, you know, these two pieces right here, as you can see, the other ones already are about an inch longer. So if you did lengthen just these two pieces here, I could have probably made the table runner about another inch wider. Um, same thing over here. If I'd have made these just a smidge longer, but this is usually this is actually a really good size. This is about 14 inches wide. Um, well, six and three quarters and six and three quarters would mean it'll be 13 and a half inches. Um, so that is actually a really nice size with that. Um, but again, if you like it wider, you got a really big table or something like that. You know that you want a, something a little more um, a wider for whatever you're going to put on it. You can. Those are the places that you need to add to. So. What I'm going to do now then is take my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut along here and cut those edges off. Um, or if you don't want to use a rotary cutter, you've got a line to follow, you can use a pair of scissors. Whatever works for you. Um, and I'll show you what that's going to look like. One other note about this table runner is because it is so long, it's around 66 inches from end to end, um, you're probably going to take, most, since most of our rulers are a maximum of 24, you're going to be... Um, drawing the lines in sections. 
So one of the nice things um, in using the old adage, you know, measure twice, cut once, um, take a look when you after you get your lines drawn and just kind of give it a look and make sure that your lines are, look to be straight, that there are not any bulges in it. You know, double check your measurements and make sure they're exactly what you want because, you know, it's one of those things, once that's cut, you know, there's really no going back. So um, you just want to make sure that you're measurements are exactly what you want and the lines are exactly where you want. Don't get in a hurry and, you know, get excited, <clears throat> excuse me, and take and, and want to, you know, cut yourself short there um, or, you know, crooked like that. So in some ways, um, make sure that your ruler won't slip so that you're less likely to have any, you know, kind of slippage as you're cutting if you're using a rotary cutter. And um, that is one of the benefits of this, you know, hand scissors. So... But anyway, just take a look at that before you, and make sure your lines are straight before you cut. Okay, now, as you can see, I've trimmed up the sides. I've got a nice, more looking like a table runner now. Um, and don't worry about these little scraps over here. Um, there is a free project on my website. If you go to Lilac Cottage Designs and look under Patterns to the French Braid Frenzy, which is the name of this one, um, you'll see a free PDF like that to make use of these scraps. Because, you know, as quilters, we don't like to waste. So you can use those up with that. So you can see this end here is already trimmed, and it looks nice. You know, we got the 135-degree uh, angles here and a nice 90 here. So that's all good. But now this end needs to be taken care of. So what we're going to do, um, this is our first block, the one that we started the whole thing with. What you're going to do now is take a large square ruler, um, or rectangular I guess would work, but what you want to do is lay it on the corner there. And to make sure that you've got your point where it's supposed to be, make sure obviously that that's where your ones are starting out, but what you want to do is see that they match on here. So see that this one's at nine and an eighth. That one is a little bit off. See, now I'm here at like nine and three quarters. So I know my angle is a little bit off on that. So what we want to do is adjust that a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take and move this angle a little bit here so that those line up. Okay, we're almost at nine and a half there, a little over nine and a half here. Okay, a little bit more. Okay. All right, looks like, see, we're right there at nine and a half on the edge and nine and a half on the edge. All right, so that's what I'm going to want to do. And I'm going to take that and trim that, and that's going to guarantee then that those lines are going to match um, when we fold this so that it looks just the way it's supposed to. So now what I'm going to do is just trim this up and get that um, looking nice. So, okay, there she is, all nice and trimmed up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and erase my chalk marks here that I've done on my dark colors and then I'm going to go through and iron out my friction pen lines and I'll be able to start pinning this to my backing and batting and get this ready to be quilted. So this is Kimberly Purdy with Lilac Cottage Designs showing you how to trim up my French braid frenzy table runner. Um, hope you uh, enjoyed it and uh, Hope you'll catch with some more of my videos. Um, if you have any questions, um, there's contact information on my website. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, and happy quilting.